esoterics of letters the mystery of the word, or, more intelligently spoken, the mystery of the knowledge of the word and the genuine use of it, requires the highest form of initiation that exists. At all times, he who has been called master of the word has always been the highest initiate, the highest priest, the true representative of God. Each religious system, each initiation, regards the knowledge of the word as the highest knowledge. Even with regard to Jesus do we find that his favorite disciple John is engaged in the word, and thus with Quabella, which eventually is also laid down in his gospel, whereas said before, you may read literally, in the beginning was the word and the word as with God, etc. No other disciple of Christ has been so profoundly initiated into the mystery of the word as was Saint John. Being master of the word, he was able to work the greatest miracles, and as the gospel says itself, this disciple was the only one who died a natural death. He himself could effect this only because he was a quabbleist, a perfect master of the word. All other disciples suffered death as martyrs. As tradition tells us, many other initiates have also been masters of the word thousands of years before Saint John. Each word consists of letters and each letter, from the esoteric point of view, expresses an idea and thus some kind of power, quality, etc., which, however, may not only be expressed by the letter alone, but also by the number analogous to the universal law. Thus legality is made clear by numbers, and ideas come to light by letters. The meaning of each letter is analogous to the three worlds known to us. Since the quabblist is able to express the sense of an idea by means of letters, and since he knows very well each number standing for the relevant idea, the letters have quite a different meaning for him than they have in the intellectual language. Thus, under the universal laws, the letter gains a quabblistic significance. This knowledge of the universal laws renders it possible for the quabblist to express several trains of thoughts by the letters, and thus by the numbers analogous to them. A word that has reference to the absolute laws and that is composed in analogy to and by means of the relevant letters and numbers is a quabalistic word, that is, a word expressed in the universal or cosmic language. To be able to form a quabalistic word, one must precisely know the complete analogy of letters and numbers. In the practical part of the book, the quabalist will be taught to use exactly any word composed according to the universal laws with regard to the mental astral and material worlds and with regard to the elements. He will learn to express words, and consequently also sentences, not only intellectually, that is, by his intelligence, but by his whole personality. Only a word expressed in such a way will have a creative effect. The correct pronunciation of the letters in one's spirit, in one's soul, and later on also in one's body, is the actual foundation of practical quabalistic mysticism. In order to become effective creatively, the quabblist must learn to speak like a child that can only babble in the beginning and later learns to pronounce single letters and words. The letters have their analogous significance in the mental, astral and material world and likewise in the various planes and hierarchies, and the quabblist must learn them and finally have command over them. From these words one can see that the theorist who is only able to think intellectually and who only comprehends letters, words and sentences with his intellect, will never be able to become a genuine quabalist. Corresponding to his state of maturity, he will only be able to comprehend the quabala merely from the intellectual, that is, philosophical point of view. The practicing quabalist, however, will be able to understand and make use of the sense of every letter, of its idea and legality, number. The study of the Quabala begins with the esoterics of the letters. When creating ideas out of his own self and arranging them to universal laws, God formed letters, and with the letters numbers which have an exact and analogous connection to one another and represent the whole universe from the highest to the lowest. The assertion by Hermes Trismegistus that as above, so below appears quite reasonable from the Quabalistic point of view. The letters which God used for creating from within his own self, the ideas that pleased him, are clearly explained in the book of creation, in Sefer Jezira. At the point of creation, above all things, ten principal ideas came into being, which, in Quabella, are reflected by the so-called Sepharoth. 
Number 10, for instance, is a reflection of God in highest form and lowest emanation. Knowing the laws of analogies, the quabblist will understand what I meant by pointing out that in relation to the ten principal ideas, man has ten fingers and ten toes. Already at this point, the quabblist will conjecture a certain relation or an analogous connection between the divine principal ideas and the Sefer Jezira. The fact that each mathematical number on our earth can be reduced to the figures 1 to 9 by addition, total of the digit, has also a quabalistically analogous coherence. In the Hebrew quabella, for instance, numerical combinations were known as geometra. However, I shall only mention the essentials that are necessary for the practical application of quabalistic mysticism, that is, for the use of the quabalistic word. He who is only anxious to learn about the special numerical combinations regarding the verse lines in Hebrew literature may, if he so wishes, resort to the relevant literature on numerical combinations.